when he becomes those people is something you never realize he turned into the very thing he was you know going against whether it is good or bad the i am nobody to decide i am not passing a judgment on harshad mehta you are i am just telling you what has happened you as a as a viewer as an audience as a person who reads the paper every day are the ones turning this man into a villain i am just telling you this is what he's done or whether he's good or bad is something you decide So how are you doing? How is it? I'm doing? good, man. I'm good. I'm good. First of all, congratulations for Scam 1992. You were sweeping the country by storm, basically. So let's start off with the question. So the idea is first thing. Most OTTs, right? The shows right now, everybody's uh, doing thrillers, uh, dark uh, comedies, maybe Mirzapur or a lot of those things, right? What is the choice with going with going with something like a financial thriller, which is a rare thing and hard to get to the people, right? What was the choice there? I think that is a, a choice, Hansel Sorty. Hmm. You know, I was uh, brought on board much later after they'd already signed and you know started working on the series from hmm. the scripting. Hmm. I was brought in uh, towards the the final draft stages. Okay, okay. You know, when we were just finalizing the draft and we were sitting in. we were also so coming back to your question idea of doing this was purely instinctive is what i believe you know when it came to hansal sir i think he had always wanted to make something about harshad mehta mm-hmm. and of course i had always heard about harshad mehta mm-hmm. but uh, i never thought you know like a, a series i we see series is also such a relatively new format that it was always about you know wanting to make a film about someone like him you know because a film is what in the traditional sense people think that have has the most of a mass approach uh-huh yeah you know, no one ever thought that you know a series on him would do well or th- would we be able to do research but i think that is where the book helped you know suchita dalal and devashish pasun's book is what really came handy when it came to our research and you know they were our Uh, the writer's main uh, point of contact, and Samir Nair, our producer, you know, at Applause, and everyone, Priya Jhawar, Deepak Sehgal, they were all very cooperative, and you know, I think everyone was working as a team, because it's not like you know, we are the we are the directors, these are the writers, and they are the producers. Everybody mm-hmm. attached to this show is a filmmaker mm-hmm. in their own might and right. Everybody is a filmmaker, you know, uh, whether you're a producer or anything. I mean, the kind of conversations we would have at you know script readings with the producers and all mm-hmm. reflected that uh, you know that passion for wanting to make a good and tell a good story i mean ultimately it all boils down to the way our writers interpreted the journey of the scam and the character which is gorgeous and i think i'd say 80% of the credit of our show goes to our writers sumit saurav karan vyas and webhav who did our dialogues you know these guys are the guys who really made the show we we only lended our um, objectivity is that's what i have usually told people you know we we were our we were the objective lens and they were the soul mm-hmm. so i never read uh, sujith dalal's book but how how much do you think the show kind of sticks to it and how much did you maybe add or remove from it so the book is actually a, a very informative and very detailed account of uh you know the dates and what happened on the dates it's mm-hmm. not it it doesn't delve too much into the personal life of harshad which is something we brought in through our research and you know through meeting a lot of people and talking to a lot of people mm-hmm. and the writers did all that research you know uh, the book is actually hitting landmarks like on you know april 22nd 1991 this is what happened this okay. is what happened this is what happened uh, you know on this date is when uh, SBI found out about you know the, the problem in their accounts, <laughs> so it was a very investigative approach. The book was written like an investigative thriller, almost. So you guys brought in the uh, drama then. <laughs> we, we 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 brought in the drama. We brought in the characteristics, you know, mm-hmm. of the characters. We, you know, lots of characters were also. A lot of it has been uh, fictionalized for the screen, mm-hmm. but it's obviously you have to do that in order to uh, make a show palatable for. You know, an audience. Yeah. You know, for viewers who might not otherwise understand this uh, scam or you know the world hmm. that this show is setting. One one thing that was fascinating is you guys somehow made all that financial jargon 
uh, accessible for people. That's like a directorial or like writing feat that I couldn't think of because it's a 10 hour thing and they're all talking about financial terms that I'd never heard of, but I could follow it once I was in like the third or fourth episode. Is there any insight you can give about that? Our, you know, our first few drafts were very descriptive and uh, they were, they were, it was a very technical show. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a very technical show and uh, as uh, filmmakers, even we, you know, initially when we did read it, so a lot of the technical aspects of our series comes from Saurav Day, mm -hmm. who is actually the real, you know, uh, uh, hum, hum Google bula <laughs> Saurav has the answer to everything. Like whenever you have a question about the stocks or, you know, the jargon or, you know, what is, uh, how is a BR, you know, uh, given, how, is, how do you put an entry in an SGL mm -hmm. and uh, you know, all every, all this research actually came from Saurav. And I think the simplification mm -hmm. of uh, the understanding and explaining the, see, explaining stocks is not tough, you know. Hansel sir, me, the writers, we've all at some point in our life, you know, uh, played with stocks. Hmm. I still do to some extent. Uh, but again, I'm a very safe stock market player. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't have the kind of money to hike up a market. <laughs> but uh, so I think the producers are the ones that brought in the, uh, you know, the objectivity of an audience and said that, you know, this is too complicated. We must figure out a way to simplify. And when that came on board is when we realized that the money market is actually the most difficult thing to explain. Huh. The stock market is something you can explain, but the money market is, there is no, what is the money market? There is no one answer. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of things, mm. you know, and how do you explain the buying and selling and trading of bonds and, you know, <laughs> You know, the securities. Huh. What is a security? What are securities? It's things like those that we had to simplify uh -huh. because the producers also felt that, you know, this is something that the audiences might not necessarily catch on to. It's a little abstract in a way. It's, it's, it's not abstract. It's just very technical. You know, see, like uh, whether you are studying law, hmm. they have their own language. They have their own way of working. Hmm. And it's the same hmm. thing. Every industry has its own jargon whether it is the film industry or anything. Mm -hmm. We are all very technical people in our own industries and I don't understand the jargon or the language used in law. I don't under, the same way I will not understand the language used in, you know, the, the trading markets. They, they're just different worlds and they require a lifetime of experience to understand. And mm -hmm. the simplification came out, you know, merely from the fact that this might be tough for an audience to understand. And then we had to meet a lot of people. The writers went and met a bunch of people that sat and explained exactly how the money market functioned. And then it was about interpreting and explaining it to that man what you understood of what he just told you. And when he said, Ki, yeah, you're almost correct. So we were like, okay, chalo, we've got a sense of what it is. And now let's try and put it in our words. Hmm. If we can understand it, everyone else will understand it. Mm -hmm. We did not want to make it as complex as a big shot or something where you don't understand anything. <laughs> yeah. No, unless you are from that world. It, we, we wanted to make it accessible. Uh -huh. It was a very conscious choice. What I mainly wanted to ask is the, the casting of it, right? Did you have any uh, issue with casting someone who is not like, I don't Bollywood sense, like very famous or like uh, star power kind of thing. The casting process was tricky. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But, uh, we never had pressure to get a star. Mm -hmm. Never, never. I think hats off to the producers, you know, to for having that, you know, faith in us. Mm. Saying ki, do whatever, you, do what is right for the story. Mm. And that is exactly what we did. Everyone who is in the show mm. has auditioned for the show. Nobody who is a part of this show has come on as friendship. Or, you know, ki mera dost hai, aja kar le. You know, it, none of that. Everybody who is in this show is there purely on the merit hmm. of their performance and on the merit of the audition that they've done hmm. for the for the particular part that they're playing. Hmm. You know, hmm. and I think 
we when it came to this show we had a very clear approach that we want this to be a very we want this to be fair hmm. we want the process of making this film to be fair who deserves it will get it hmm. whoever is good for it will get it hmm. and everyone i think there was a what load of auditions yeah matlab even for harshad i would say hmm. there must have been at least six to seven people that auditioned for the role wow pratik happened to be the one that stood out from them and we like pratik and he has such no. a charisma like he stands out <laughs> great charisma but again pratik charisma also was developed hmm. with so many things with the dialogue the hmm. the the situation the costume hmm. pratik put on weight pratik was a very thin guy hmm. you know so a lot of that comes you know his body language the minute he put on weight he said i'm breathing differently hmm. my voice has changed because i've put on 20 kilos wow. you know i'm walking differently i'm feeling different i'm feeling easier hmm. so his demeanor changed and it all just became a part of him hmm. so uh, you, you also worked with hansel sir for a bunch of films but this particular show your uh, co director also what is your working yes. relationship like on set or maybe casting or um, i mean like you guys would he's a lot older and you are a lot younger you would have different perspectives towards it right so what kind of uh, choices do you make maybe differently or together see hansel sir is so experienced i i actually lean on him a lot for um, assurance hmm. reassurance of whether what i'm doing is right or not hmm. you know and i think everyone has needs that support and a lot of filmmakers first time filmmakers get that support from their producers or hmm. you know an experienced writer or their lead actors hmm. and i lean a lot on hansel sir for that majorly also for the fact that hansel sir comes from this time hmm. i was only a year old when the scam happened <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i'm not even from that time but again like a lot of research hmm. came from you know reading a lot of books Hmm. uh reading a lot of articles uh, uh you know going through a lot of uh, pictures online and understanding what the era looked like so i i usually get, get i i was very involved in the casting i was very involved in the locations you know and the basic uh, general look and tone and approach of the series including the music hansel sir's focus was very script related and very you know performance related and you know things like that so we have a very unspoken way of working with each other because we just know each other's strengths and weaknesses mm-hmm. and we tend to feed off of that <laughs> you know like when like he knows when i am when you know ki i don't know about much about this so he himself will just come and say acha ji yahan aise karte i'll be like ha theek hai good kar diya unhone and then when he knows like you know i don't know he, uh, what do we do about this shot and then i'll just go and you know i'll speak to the dp and we'll figure out a way to do it mm-hmm. so i am also very technical you know i'm i'm a very i'm tech savvy so i get involved in things like vfx and i get involved in things like music you know and uh, i i was i got a major portion of the crew together because a lot of our crew members were all young and you know new and i'm more attuned to these guys the, the new guys who are coming up you know i have been wanting to work with achin thakkar for very long and achin is someone i have known since our college days you know and i have known of achin i have met achin a bunch of times and uh, i have always wanted and i have always seen something in him you know yeah. when lucky for us uh, we got the opportunity to get somebody new on board and the music like really took over the world man it's all over the memes it's everywhere everybody's used it for everything i can think of every dance move has been cut to that music and it it fits it's amazing <laughs> and one, one more technical aspect of the show that was uh, really amazing to me was um, the production design right there's a lot of places uh, the stock exchange or the house harshad mehta's house and stuff i i think most of those you guys put sets or like used extension cg cgi or something but it was it was brilliant like in the sense it it doesn't it shows scope without using too much money yeah w- what was uh, what were some interesting maybe choices that you made in that so you know we our main thing was because we did we had a limited budget hmm. right we had to make the show within a certain budget and the budget was not a lot of money hmm. so we had to we had to choose where we wanted to go haywire hmm. you know and i think our 
we had three locations where we knew we had to splurge hmm. our first location was the trading ring hmm. you know that the stock market ring is where we had to splurge but hmm. lucky for us we were we were granted permission and you know we had very good executive producers you know uh, our producer injanil chakraborty my ep priyesh kaushik hmm. you know and uh, so these guys just we they managed to take a chance and just go approach the bombay stock exchange Mm-hmm. And it uh, happened to be that you know they would they allowed us to film in that actual ring. Okay. You know it's very different now. They have LED screens and you know they have uh, televisions on every corner and uh, you know they they have a brand new carpet and they have these mm-hmm. curtains hanging. So I think half our battle was won uh, when you know we got the right location. Okay. And then it was about. uh there was a lot of cg involved to uh, correct uh the period of it uh, oh. so like erasing the led backgrounds you know and all of that and adding the televisions and you know the blackboards and everything mm-hmm. uh crowd multiplication mm-hmm. there was a lot of cg involved in the trading ring especially because the entire roof that you see on top mm-hmm. which is the dome mm-hmm. inside the trading ring ring is non existent today mm-hmm. we don't have a dome anymore in that is that is actually a cg extension of the location hmm. you know they also have these massive curtains hmm. you know ribbons that are hanging from the ceiling hmm. so we had to erase all of that and actually create an entire dome our second location was harshad's house you know which was actually a bungalow hmm. because we weren't able we we search i mean i i think it, this uh, series has been the most exhausting location scout that i have ever done we had a location scout that lasted almost 4 months and we were scouting every day for four, almost almost every day for four months and we looked through a crazy number of apartments and we just weren't getting and see our pitch was simple we have seen photos you know we went and recorded the actual house and everything and we knew that we have to uh, we want to recreate this exact very same structure we want to recreate so what you see on screen is an exact and accurate recreation of what harshad's house really looked like the flooring is the same the deck is the same the windows are the same the sofa is the same so you took that from reference images or the place exists still the house is still there it's under lock and key now okay but uh, i think i believe uh, that the house is listed on the market to sell but no one wants to buy it because you know what jinx property hota hai na yeah waisa wala type hai to one of my one of my i had an intern uh uh-huh. you know uh, who i sent over there and i said ki pose go with the line producer one of our production controllers hmm. pose as a buyer hmm. and go with a broker and go see the house wow <laughs> you put a gopro on him <laughs> yeah, so i mean he managed to see it you uh-huh. know we managed to find a building that resembled the exterior of the building resembled madhuli apartments mm-hmm. there were a few images we found online and in some photos mm-hmm. you know that uh, this uh, gentleman called fazan who is a very renowned photographer you know he had he had made a coffee table book and he provided us with a lot of pictures of you know he had he had clipped a lot of photos of harshad mehta in his apartment and you know at his office so we used a lot of that to recreate all a lot of these locations and so we found a bungalow but we did not have sea facing you know and so we had to cover it up with chroma on three sides and we had to create an entire extension and to be very honest it is not a, a portion of the film i'm particularly very proud of because if i had a little more time the vfx would have been slightly better you know i feel like uh, we ran short of time mm-hmm. to complete it but again i am not i can't complain Hmm. about it because it is what it is you know it is what it is and uh, if i had maybe it is somewhere maybe my fault i wish i had planned that better hmm. you know uh, it would have just been a better looking visual for you all <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> and uh, i think the the third location which happened to be our most expensive location mm-hmm. turned out to be the times of india office oh which was a full set from scratch it was actually a go down it was we shot in the golden tobacco company which is completely defunct in vilayparle and everything from every light on the ceiling 
to the flooring was reconstructed for the show. It was painted from scratch. Every single thing, everything, the partitions, everything were built beautifully by our production designer. So we had two production designers on our series. There was Tarpan Srivastava who was for the first chunk, and the second half of our shoot was uh, handled by Payal Ghosh. Okay. Payal Ghosh is the one that created the Times of India office, and Tarpan Srivastava is the one who did the house. Mm-hmm. And also, you know that that house was very interesting because it was an it was a completely open bungalow. Okay. It was a massive living room in which we had to build partitions. We had to lower the ceiling because apartments don't have such high ceilings. You know, we had to lower the ceilings. We had to we really had to work on it. You know, the flooring was wooden. We had to change the flooring and you know and put a marble. And we we used the same textures that were there. You know. we used the exact identical marble texture and design that was in harshad's original house the times of india is only is the only location where we went a little crazy and we said none of us knew what the times of india really looked like so we took a lot of liberty in recreating it just to make it cinematic we said you know this is a location that must look very busy and very packed and very big because the times of india has a certain stature hmm. and it has a certain you know feel to it hmm. and we want the location to give you the feeling of the times of india hmm. you know so we made it very spaced out we added a lot of tables and papers and lots of, i mean hamara i think hamara daily bill raddi ka hi kuch 7 8 lakh rupaye tha the raddi ka bill was only 7 lakh rupees a day it's intense <laughs> that was the amount of paper that was sourced hmm. the amount of newspapers that was sourced for that location coming to the times of india arc of the thing right shreya's uh, she plays uh, suchita dalal she plays this kind of like almost like a very similar character to harshad but she takes a very different approach to um, yeah. what i mean to approach to the financial crimes or like the things that are happening around her this kind of righteous crusader kind of thing what was your approach to her arc basically what why did you think you had to bring her in to tell his story because she is kind of the eye of the thing she is a- everything she is the sutradhar hmm. you know uh, but it's not something we brought in later hmm. that was it was actually going to be harshad's story being told by suchita dalal okay okay that was always our approach it hmm. was not something we devised later hmm. the voice overs were all scripted hmm. the sequencing was entirely scripted it was actually a story of these two people hmm. starting out together hmm. and growing together simultaneously hmm. and you know at some point crossing paths wow and both having the same doggedness huh. you know and one's doggedness pulling him down mm-hmm. the, the others taking her forward you know they just had both very different paths but they were both very similar in terms of they were not similar in the way they worked they were just similar with you know in their ambition they both wanted to do good one had a different way of doing good and you know what he thought was good was not necessarily good but he always believed what he was doing was right ha huh. you know and they, i mean they came from the same world but they chose different paths right that's what i think makes this more movie a show a more critique of the system than just a man who did something wrong this is a critique of a system in a which allows for people to do that or which destroys someone who they don't want to be grown in front of yeah. absolutely so, absolutely and it is it is uh, the show is a cautionary tale hmm. you know about uh, the journey of a man who hmm. whose greed and whose ego takes over his innocence hmm. you know? and uh, you don't realize when you turn into something you turn into the very thing you were against hmm. you know? harshad's entire ambition came out from the fact that i need to show these guys their place hmm. and i need to show them that you know someone like me can also do right and hmm. can do well you know but when he becomes those people is something you never realize he turned into the very thing he was you know going against suchita however had a very different trajectory suchita suchita just wanted to do right by what she studied by what she by who she was you know by the people and serve the common goal of where she of her workplace and her her basic thing was the truth 
you know whether it is good or bad the, i am nobody to decide i am not passing a judgment on harshad mehta you are i am just telling you what has happened hmm. you as a as a viewer as an audience as a person who reads the paper every day are the ones turning this man into a villain i am just telling you this is what he's done or whether he's good or bad is something you decide so uh, one last thing then uh, i wanted to know maybe five recommendations you could give e- either uh, shows or movies that you watched recently or something that you want people to watch i think the first thing i would recommend people to watch is 000 on amazon it's a series which has completely blown me away and it is not something it's not what i took away from that series is not something even i can put into words yeah i think it is phenomenally crafted stefano solima is one of the greatest filmmakers you know i have watched i was a big fan of his film gomora hmm. which he had made many years ago and i remember watching it when i was assisting on gangs of asipur and anurag sir had sent us hmm. had given us a copy of the dvd and told us to watch the film <laughs> and after that when i watched 000 i just see this filmmaker finally getting the liberty to tell the story he wants and the way he envisioned it it is it is quite fantastic hmm. i think it is one of the most original and most refreshing narratives i have watched in a very long time i just recently around 2 weeks ago finished watching season 2 of the crown you know and i'm just i've just started season 3 hmm. i was a little late to you know the show hmm. but the crown is has is is something else it's it's beautifully done it's it's a great uh, tale of our times you mm-hmm. know and it it tells you exactly why we are where we are and it's a great uh, understanding of you know our you know the british matriarch and you know the the evolution of its politics and bureaucracy i would recommend i think a film i i love is memories of murder mm-hmm. it's a film mm-hmm. i i recommend to everyone yeah because it's one of uh, it's it's just such a great film yeah i, I don't even know how to put it in <laughs> it's one of my favorites mm. i think another great film that i really enjoy and i can watch any time of the day mm-hmm. or any time of the week mm-hmm. is uh, children of men watch any satyajit ray film any and it will change your life it will change your life i think he is one of the best filmmakers that ever lived one of the best writers of our times there is truly nobody like him he, that 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 quality of storytelling does we can only aspire to be that good i don't think i will ever be that good you know and that is i think you know when people say sky is the limit no ray is the limit <laughs> <laughs> can't be better than also i just wanted to tell you one thing that um, after seeing your show i thought there was a best way to describe the show it's all the president's men meets wolf of wall street at the same time <laughs> it's like i thought that was the best way to describe your show because that's what i was thinking all the way through watching that show i was like this is brilliant how can you take these I mean, crazy we, ideas and put them together <laughs> we watch a lot of shows you know we watch a lot we watch billions we watch succession we but i think a really large inspiration for the crafting of our series came from mad men hmm. uh, also something not a lot of people know that you know a lot of people on twitter and you know instagram have found similarities in you know yeah, our title right. sequence to the title sequence of mad men huh. but a lot of people who they don't know this but huh. that was actually intentional huh. <laughs> one of my favorite shows and i i it was a very clear brief to jishnu you know who designed the title sequence that mm-hmm. i want this title sequence to be a homage to mad men because it is one truly what i believe one of the best shows ever made hmm it is a lesson in writing hmm. oh and of course if you want recommendations i'd recommend the wire hmm. mad men uh i would say breaking bad but everyone's already seen it hmm. uh, <laughs> but uh the wire mad men and a bbc series called the hour which i think is oh. absolutely top notch this have not heard <laughs> but yes mad men is one of my favorite shows hmm. and if you actually see the way we've constructed and shot all the scenes in the offices mm-hmm. and the way they're all wearing suits and they're in silhouettes mm-hmm. is actually very it's a lot we drew a lot of inspiration from the way mad men was crafted as an office drama you know of course wolf of wall street and all is some people say but wolf of wall street is a very extreme and hyper uh, film mm-hmm. you know, we weren't we weren't that 
we were trying to be a little bit of both worlds, but we obviously did not have what Wolf of Wall Street had, which was that intense and insane energy. <laughs> because our show had no coke. <laughs> <laughs> and also another closing thing I'd like to say is, you know, Hansel sir and I were actually there on the show to support the vision that everybody else brought on board. Mm. I think a tremendous amount of credit. Uh, actually, I'd say a, so most of the credit has to go to the writers. Mm -hmm. And I'd say after the writers, a major, tremendous amount of credit has to go to the actors that came on board mm -hmm. and gave us so much more than even what we had written, mm. you know, and what we had vision and vision for the show. They just brought a different life of their own, whether it is Shreya or Pratik or you know, Hemant Kher or Chirag Hora or so many of the other 200 actors that we have on the show. They all, man, they don't need directors. They're filmmakers. Like I said, you know, our show was made by filmmakers. They were all, everyone's a filmmaker on this show. You know, we are only as good as the team, you know, we have on board and the team that supports us. So my cinematographer, my sound designers, Abhishek and Shijin, and these guys all are production designers. And our costume designer Arun, I think, what can, what am I, what, what do I actually as a film director add <laughs> to, you know, these amazing talents coming together and bringing together what you see on screen. I can only tell them that this, I'm not a big fan of how this looks and I'm not a big fan of how that looks, but they're the ones who are doing all the work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So a lot of credit goes to all of them hmm. because they worked like crazy. Hmm. you know, for over a year towards our passion, you know, towards something we wanted to do. And I think that that requires a lot of, you know, a lot of perseverance and a lot of courage and a lot of, you know, determination, you know, to, uh, to let go and say that, you know, this is for them because you're taking an interview of me. You haven't interviewed my cinematographers and all, and they know that, you know, <laughs> because they've also put in so much work. They put in so much work, but they know that this is, this is for them. And I think that requires a lot of maturity and a lot of, uh, you know, it, it deserves a tremendous amount of respect. Thank you so much for giving your time. And uh, I'm, Thank I you. hope I'm not holding you back from any of your uh, things. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. I'm more than happy. All right, man. Raj. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. Press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates from Walkspace.